being completely unauthorized, absolutely unofficial, totally unsanctioned, and never ever before disclosed to the powers that be, Siegfried von Kohlbach's mighty fist filled the songbook. <laughs> the fist printed. 03 slash 04 XXIX. It has been published in a joint venture between This Ought to Be a Mediograph Press and It Is Not Wrong to Be Honorable Publications, <laughs> with support from the Barney Buddies and Siegfried's Mikey Fist. Oh, Friday Miss. <laughs> Just to tell you, how, tell some of you how. The Mighty Fist came to be an icon within the Kingdom of North Shield. The year was A.S. something or other, <laughs> known to those outside of our society as 2003 or 2004, depending on the portion of that year into which these events fell. I was not party to that myself. Sir Siegfried von Kohlbach, and his good friend, Lady and Baroness Bredai de Dillacotton, had entered and emerged victorious in the great contest to secure the crowds of the North Shield. The North Shield, which would shortly be a kingdom and have such things for the first time. Cold, perhaps, is this land oft times, but warmth from hearts such as theirs radiates ever for the North Shield's people, who are kin to each to one another and to all those folk who wish to be counted part of our family and clan. As those who must later and first wear the mantles of North Shield's king and queen, it fell to them and their advisors to devise a system of reward and recognition for their folk. For such is the weight of law and tradition within our society that each newly raised kingdom shall have its own acknowledgments, as well as those of peerages which all kingdoms share in common. Many systems were proposed, and not few were the themes considered, around which the North Shield's recognitions and awards might be built. In the fullness of time, Siegfried and Bredai decided the legends and the myths of their people provide figures and imagery which, living already in our hearts, lend their significance and emotional impact to the North Shield and its awards. In the fullness of time, Siegfried and Bredai ascended the stellar thrones, and they attended the twelfth night celebrations in the barony of North Stogan in the year of our society, 39. For both of these things, I was present to, be, to bear witness. <laughs> During their evening course at twelfth night, a person was summoned from outside the hall. During the wait, His Majesty graciously endeavored to entertain the populace and educate us. While we created the North Shields Award structure, we discussed centering all of our awards around a single image. One dear to me, and I think to all of you as well, Siegfried's mighty fist. And the king made the gesture which a young man uses to impress a lady with his arms muscles, but with the fist facing forward. And he grinned broadly. So did we. For instance, Siegfried's mighty fist of the arts and sciences, and he pumped his arm forward and back sharply once, and displayed, displayed the royal theme. And Siegfried's mighty fist of youth combat! <laughs> Pump, grin, out of out joy. And say, for service, Siegfried's mighty fist of, and his people joined in perfect unison with him, Service! <laughs> Muscles and fist, grin! Yes, my people are smart. I knew you'd catch on. <laughs> we all of us there in that court appreciated this lesson in our kingdom's early history and some behind the scenes conversations. And of course, we appreciated laughter and shared merriment. Periodically, Siegfried Rex himself, in any love, displayed his mighty fist and equally mighty grin. Throughout the rest of court, calling out, Siegfried's mighty fist of, making the mighty fist gesture, and grinning broadly, just a bit madly in some cases, <laughs> enjoyed the status of popular pastime, each was happy. These things became
became a running joke throughout court and beyond. Joke only because the mighty fist was not chosen as a war symbolism. And soon the running joke was running roughshod all over his neck. <laughs> <laughs> I did not notice what prompted this, but at one point, Siegfried suddenly burst out with, Okay, enough! It was a joke, people! <laughs> Too late. <laughs> at another, and nobody tells Branos, his majesty of the Middle Kingdom at the time, about this. Brave king, I certainly shall not tell him. Even so, the zeal for Siegfried's mighty fist continued unabated. A number of people, and the number was at least three, called out over the hall's din. Darian, I think we need some pewter fist badges. And similar. And this merriment continued, even unto the revel at Master Owen and Lady Flory's stead. There, a good and holy pilgrim came to the door and shared with the earliest arrivals a song of the making. Parenthetically, we have that good gentle here with us today, good from the pilgrim we have to thank. A song of her making, a song of Siegfried's mighty fist. The fire blazed warmer under a smoky sky. Later, when stories and song had passed twice round the rebel's hall, the pilgrim announced completion of her song and shared it with all. Thus, the pilgrim became our inspiration, and it was determined that we each should, well, you hold this book in your hands now. Signed this third day of March, on of Society 39, by the hand of the wrong and honorable Lord Darian Cordella, from the Baron of Caracas Mar, North Shore. And if any of you would care to share a portion of history, which is the songbook itself, please, by all means, come see me later at Graves for a post-travel, and we'll share some of these songs. <laughs>